Hey guys, today I'm going to take you through a tutorial on how I painted this wall and Zane's wall upstairs. Hey guys, how is it going? Welcome to Anderson Lane. Today, if this is your first time here, please don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Alright, so a ton of you guys have commented since I did this wall behind me. Um, about how much you love it. So I've been working on doing a tutorial and to do that I had to paint another wall. So we're going to dive in and show you guys how to do a herringbone wall. This one is a little bit different than the one that I did downstairs but I'll explain both methods in this video. So hang on for the ride. It's actually a really easy project. I've done lots of painting of walls. I have done lines, stencils, I have done an argyle pattern, this is actually the easiest of all the things that I have ever painted. So I thought I would show you guys how to do it. For this project, you're gonna want some frog tape, a measuring tape, and a level. And of course, your paint and painting supplies. It also would help if you had a phone in there to do your measurements with. I'd like to say that I love frog tape. This is the tape that I would use. This has been what's done the crispest lines for me and this is the size that I get. Now to start off, you're gonna wanna wash your walls down to make sure that there's no dust or grime on them. Then you need to remove all of the hardware, making sure that you cover the holes if you need to, if you're not planning on replacing them, but just making sure that everything is taken off. The next step is to measure the length of your wall so you know how many stripes and how far to put them apart. So for instance, this wall was 127 inches and some change. So I divided that by 11 and got about 11 and a half. It was the closest whole number. So I put my stripes marking them at 11 and a half inches apart and I ended up with 11 stripes down my wall. Now for Zane's wall, I just started in the middle of his room and marked what I thought looked good. His lines are actually 16 and a half inches apart so there's really no set rules. It's just what you like. On to step three. Now that you have your lines marked on the bottom of your wall, it's time to get out your level and start marking the same line all the way up your wall. The level is really important here to make sure that your lines are nice and straight. So you need to find that little bubble, make sure that everything is nice and level, and mark it all the way up. Tape time. Now when you start to tape, you'll need to decide which side of the marking you are going to line your tape up with, meaning the right or the left side. Then following that marking, you'll tape all the way up your wall and repeat this process, making sure you are always staying on that same side of the marking with all of the lines. When you're finished, your wall should look something like this. Now we need to tape out the pattern. To do this, you will need to know the height of your ceiling. Most walls are 8, 10, or 12 feet high, so easily divisible by an even number. However, make sure to take into account the trim you may have on your walls. For example, my wall is an 8-foot wall, but with trim, it's only 92 inches. So for this project, I wanted to make a pattern that wasn't huge, but not tiny either, because let's be honest, that's way too much taping. So I landed on 7 inches. This was 92 divided by 7 was just over 13 and I knew I could make up that 1% in the taping and it wouldn't be detectable by the naked eye. So to sum up, I have 13 markings from floor to ceiling spaced 7 inches apart. Once you've figured out those markings, you need to mark out them on the first piece of tape on one edge of the wall. Once you've done this, the easiest way I've found to continue this through the rest of the wall is to take your level, lay it horizontally on the wall, make sure that either the top edge or the bottom edge is completely level, then take your next piece of tape and make a small marking on the wall at that tape and carry this through throughout the entire wall. Now for Zane's wall, it's all just willy-nilly. You just put them up wherever you want. There's no rhyme or reason. Just make sure they are at an angle. Now the exciting part, taping your pattern. When you tape your pattern, you need to start at one corner and pull down. So you're going from one point down to the next point and just pulling it tightly and smoothing it out as you go. I said just starting on one column and then going to the next column after you're completely done. After this, you will need to take a credit card. I just use the back of the taping and go over the tape and press it all, every single piece before you're done to make sure that it's all good. Now it's time to paint. So you can take one color, you can do multiple colors. With this one, I just decided to do one color. Make sure that you go over it and get every single little piece. Then you wait and you need to do at least two coats. With Zane's wall, I actually just took three colors and put them wherever I felt like they went. So it's all your own. 
Now it's time to remove the tape. You do need to do this while the tape is still wet so it comes off easily. And here is the finished product after you remove the tape. That is all in today's work and how you make a herringbone wall. I hope that this tutorial helps you go find your inspiration, find your wall. I love paint because it is something that you can do to change the whole look of a room for really inexpensive. Let me know if you guys try this out and if it works for you. I love, love, love hearing your guys' comments, so please don't forget to comment down below. We'll see you again next time. Bye.